Hey everyone, um, this is Melissa Hassong here I'm doing my first ever Instagram live today and I'm just getting Serena up. Hey Serena! Hey. hey Mel, how are you? I am so good. It is so good to see you. Good, you too. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So I was just introducing kind of our combo today and um, super excited everyone to have Serena joining us from Red Head, Red Head to Rev Head. And Serena is just a human that I have admired and respected, like, since the second I met you. And... It's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, friend. So our conversation tonight is really going to focus on what it's like to be a mother of riding motorcycles. Um, this is something that I don't have experience with. I'm, I don't have kids. Um, so I wanted to pick your brain because you're the expert. Um, but to give, to give everyone kind of a brief intro of um, all the badass stuff that you do and that you've been doing, I just yeah. wanted to quick say that Serena is an amazing writer. We'll get into sort of your story in a little bit here. But you are a co-founder of Iron Lilies Minnesota. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you have a big, beautiful jewelry line, which I'm super obsessed with. <laughs> and you're just a great rider. You are such an incredible leader in the Twin Cities female riding community. Um, so okay. I really want to honor you for that first and foremost. And I think like that was very evident to me the first time we met. And I was trying to think today, like the first time I met you was probably like two years ago um, on like the Orchard Ride. And okay. I think, yeah, you were on your big, beautiful Harley. And I was like, that chick. Wow. Um, you just it was probably the triumph if it was two years ago. The Harley was added a year ago, I think. Oh, so. that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just have such great energy, um, good vibes all around. And um, the other really cool thing that you do and you have been doing for two years in a row is you're a long distance sponsored rider for Moon Motorsports. Yeah. Yep, I'm super honored to represent them and and flattered to be given the opportunity to do it again this next season for them. So yeah, that's super cool. Very humbling. Yeah, you did some amazing rides with them this past year. I know I was creeping all those photos and videos <laughs> for a long yep. time. Yep. First iron butt uh, in the books. So yeah, yeah I have uh, Alex over at Moon Motorsports was my partner in crime on that. So that was that was a, a learning curve for sure. Glad mm -hmm. I've done that once and I get to do it again this season. So stay tuned for that. Yes. I love how you set goals and then you smash them and then you like get to the next level <laughs> and you just keep going. It's really, really cool. Yeah. What else can you do? Keep riding. So uh, yeah. Those miles coming, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, um, why don't you just kind of tell us about your story and like ah. how, how you kind of got into riding and, and found this lifestyle? <laughs> well, as you know, I know we're going to try to keep this to about 30 minutes here, but as you know, um, I could easily probably talk your off for a couple of hours, so I'll, I'll keep it to the abbreviated version. Um, you know, my story probably somewhat atypically. Um, I didn't grow up around motorcycle. Well, I, my dad was a rider, but not most of my childhood. He didn't really start riding again until I was in probably high school or early college. And, um, but I didn't grow up around dirt bikes. I didn't grow up, you know, with brothers and I didn't, I never dated anyone who rode. Um, it just always in the back of my mind was something I knew I wanted to do. Mm. And then, you know, life happens. You, you, go to college, you have kids, you get married, you do all those things. And um, as a woman, and I know that's one of the things you want to talk about today, it's that, do I do this when you have children? Um, and I met a woman at a company I worked for about, gosh, eight, eight years ago now. Uh, she was 55 at the time and had started writing just a few years prior. Mm -hmm. And we hit it off and started talking. And I told her about my interest in learning to ride. And she said, if you're going to do it, just do it. She said she wished she hadn't waited so long in her life for her son to grow up mm -hmm. before she did it, because she, she also developed just such a passion for it. Um, and really, I have her to thank for giving me the extra push, seeing another woman, a strong woman, a creative, fiery spirit that you know, said, just go do it. What are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. You know, and really the worst thing that's going to happen is you go to the class and, and go through it and maybe get licensed and just decide, you know, maybe that isn't what I want to do. But if you don't try it, you don't know. 
So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of how my journey started. And from there, um, also unusual for me is my husband was not a writer at the time. That's right. Um, I once divorced, once remarried. So I'm, I'm also a very open book. So <laughs> there's not a lot of secrets in my closet. Um, but uh, my husband now, he was not a writer and he has the type of career where he works all summer long mm -hmm. and uh, was really getting burnt out. And I think got to a point where he was really tired of seeing me be gone all summer on these great adventures and come home just full of energy and excited for life and all the new people I've met and things I've seen and riding in the rain and the heat and just all of it. And uh, finally, last summer was his first full season riding. So he finally got the bug and, mm -hmm. and uh, he's just a natural and he loves it. So for us, as far as our relationship goes, it's, it's changed the dynamic because it was my thing for a long time. So I was scared how that was going to change it. Mm -hmm. But um, family wise, I have two of my own children who are now 15 and 18. Um, my son, as you probably saw in the little promo post for this, is the one who primarily rides with me. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter has not shown a ton of interest, though she started to talk about maybe she should learn to ride. Mm -hmm. And I also have a 19-year-old uh, stepson and 20-year-old stepdaughter, who surprisingly, my stepdaughter, who's all of five feet tall, just recently at Christmas said she might want to learn to ride. So it's, it's contagious <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I love so that's been where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your story. And I think you've, you've highlighted so much there that is like, I want to dive, <laughs> dive into, but I just want to like acknowledge that it's such a unique story too, um, mm -hmm. that you found riding not super young, you know, you, you didn't grow up into it. Um, similar to me, like I didn't do that either. But the fact that you were encouraged to ride um, by another woman with children, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and then you started riding, like you already had your kids at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, at the time I started riding, I had a an uh, let's see, eight year old and eleven year old. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know, not little little kids, but young enough that they're yeah. not self sufficient. Totally. So yeah, yeah. And I think that that's what I hear a lot in, in my community. And that's really why we're having this conversation tonight is because um, I hear a lot from women who say, um, yeah, like that's compelling. Like I want to ride. I, that sounds amazing, but I have children and I spend all day convincing them not to take risks <laughs> and, and to be as safe as possible because I love them and I want to protect them. And that's yeah. natural. But I think, um, it can be kind of like a conflict there of like protect your family, protect yourself, but also like try and live authentically and explore those passions and those hobbies. Um, yeah. So that, I think that's really cool that you started riding before your children kind of like grew up and like moved out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what, I guess kind of going off of that, like what is your experience being as a mother who rides motorcycles? Yeah. You know, it, it's not something I take lightly, that's for sure. Um, however, I, there's so much to dive into just on this one topic alone. Yeah. Um, the one one thing I will highlight is, as women, of course, we feel that it's our responsibility to protect our children. Mm -hmm. And so there's it's a very personal choice, of course, if you're going to ride a motorcycle and if you're going to involve your young children in it as well. Mm -hmm. And I completely respect that. However, the flip side of that coin is I know from my own childhood experience, my dad rode all the time when I was in high school, yeah. my sister rode with him, and she's six years younger than me. Um, so why did the boys get to have all the fun and the women get to stay home and take care of the kid? Mm -hmm. I'll just leave that out there. Um, we can dive into that on another day. <laughs> For me, my personal choice and, and where I've kind of come to terms with writing as a woman and a mother is, one, it probably helps that I worked, helps and hurts that I worked in the insurance field for a number of years. I have life insurance coming out my ears. Um, for me, now that is of course never going to physically replace me if something happens to me. It's not going to replace my children if something were to happen to them. However, it gives me a little more security knowing 
that I have some of my ducks in a row mm -hmm. that if worst case scenario happens mm -hmm. that they're taken care of, that I've left a legacy for them. Um, I also have had very candid conversations with my kids over the years of it's, it's kind of that no risk, no reward conversation yeah. of I'm really passionate about this. This fuels me. I work so that I can do this, yeah. <laughs> not the other way around. Um, and so I've had really candid conversations with them that look, mom loves doing this. And I want you to find things that are hard for you to do and that you're going to find passion in. And if it's risky, but you're going about it in a way that's responsible and safe and growing and enjoying it. I don't want you to stop crossing the road because you're afraid of what's on the other side. Yeah. You know, go after it. Um, and if something happens, you know, none of us are assured tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they know how passionate I am about traveling and motorcycle travel and all of that. And I want them to find things in their lives that they're equally as passionate about. So I think it's, about having honest conversations with your family, with your kids. I know it can be tough for many people when you don't have a spouse that's supportive or a partner that's supportive of this type of endeavor. Mm -hmm. That's a hard one. That's a tough one. Um, and that only, you know, the person choosing to ride can make that decision. And then there's family dynamics. You know, I, I am divorced and many times I would ride when my children were with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that kind of conflict of where are the kids who's watching after them um but i know plenty of women too that have spouses or partners that don't ride and um the kids are home with them when they're out so it's a balancing act there's i, th I think a lot of things to weigh and uh figure out are the kids an excuse for not learning to ride mm. or are there other other things blocking the path to, to doing it. Um, and then learning what type of riding you want to do. Do you want to just take little in-city cruises? Do you want to go long distance? Do you want to do dirt? Do you want to, you know, what is it? It doesn't have to be a major time commitment just for a little bit of wind therapy and freedom. Yeah. So, you know, it, it can be whatever you want to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, yeah. yeah, I just love your story again. I'm such a fan. Um, and I think it's, it's such a unique perspective that doesn't really get a lot of airtime in mm -hmm. the industry, in the community. And it's everything you talked about is so much more complicated than when I go for a ride. Like I'm the only person I consult if I want to go for a ride. I'll right. be like, hey, husband, I'll be back in an hour or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, I'm not thinking about all these different um, basically people's relationships and how that's going to play out and, yeah. and different um, Im implications for, for who, like who I ride with and when I ride. Um, mm -hmm. So I really love that. And, and it's such a good, important point that you bring up too, is like getting um, all your documents in an in line, all that kind of legal stuff. And mm -hmm. um, like, and that was a big thing when I started riding, because obviously you kind of, your mind goes to the worst case scenario and you think, mm -hmm. oh, what happens in a crash? Like, what am I going to do? And, and I investigated all like the health documents that you have to prepare just in case and like the, the wills and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I think that's a really good point because again, not a lot of that is talked about um, in the, in the riding community. So I guess how... Um, how do your kids feel about the fact that you ride? Um, well, back up to one other important document that, yeah. that uh, before I answer that question. <laughs> so this may sound really morbid, but every person I've ever told that I do this, it's like a light bulb for them. Mm. I, on my nightstand, and it's there really at this point, kind of just as a thing to leave behind for my life's legacy, um, I mean, I'll be 43 tomorrow, so it's not like I've been on this earth for a really long time. <laughs> but I leave what I call my just-in-case letters. Oh. So there's one to each of my kids. There's one to my husband. And they're sealed. Um, and I have some pictures in there, some of my favorite memories. And I have, and I update them every once in a while as we go through the years. But there's just kind of a, a couple pages of things I'm proud of them about, um, you know, things I hope they accomplish in their lives. 
if I'm not here, what is it I want them to remember? What I want them to take with them? What I want them not to get stuck on? You know, those sorts of things that as a mom, sometimes we don't say often enough or we say it and they don't hear mm-hmm. it <laughs> until mm-hmm. something tragic mm-hmm. happens and they go, I wish this. Yeah. So I leave these just in case letters and my husband knows where they are. Um, in his, I even have, <laughs> excuse me, in his, I even have a little short list of kind of my, um, uh, what would you call it? Not my burial arrangements, but my, my final, final arrangements, you know, like I want to yeah. be, cremated and put in little vials and have people take me all over the world you know like that's that's my last wish so I know it sounds kind of morbid for me it gives me a little bit of peace knowing that I have some final words Mm. whether whether tomorrow is my last day crossing the street or it's 20 years from now and it happens to be a motorcycle accident whatever it is so um so that's probably the most important document that I have (laughs) next to my life insurance and and will and for people who put off doing those things, they're not that painful to do. Yeah. And they really do give you a lot of peace of mind. Yeah. So yeah. if you do find a, a time to do it, just just knock it out, get it done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, kind of side railed there off track. Um, you asked what my kids think about. Can I just jump in super quick and yeah. ask that? That was so good. So um, I agree, like it is, like once you figure out what you need to do for those kind of legal things, um, yeah, it's just a matter of like ripping the bandaid off. But I think it really acknowledges like the big thing about writing and you already alluded to this is that it's risky. And whoever is watching this, you know, if you're a rider, if you're thinking about that, you might want to ride, like we're not going to sugarcoat that and say that, you know, it's not risky. My personal opinion is if, if it wasn't risky, it wouldn't be so fun. <laughs> um, so I don't no, know. again, no risk, no reward. Um, yeah. And there's plenty of naysayers out there that say, you know, it's not us that's the risk, it's it's everybody else. And I've seen my dad in, in plenty of hit and miss, run into the ditch, you know, hurt, that sort of thing. Um, it's also as safe as you want to make it. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to wear, if you want to be at GAT, if you want to wear all the gear, exactly. if you don't, that's your choice. There's, yeah. I'm not going to fault anybody for that. I'm going to, I'm going to ride with people that wear helmets and don't yeah. that wear full gear and don't, um, you know, a whole nother video is all the safety stuff I carry with me. But you know, my kids, my, my son is fully outfitted. He has been mm-hmm. since he started ride, riding with me at the age of 10. Mm-hmm. He's always had boots, jeans, motorcycle, actual motorcycle jacket, yeah. gloves and helmet. Um, and, and he knows I won't, I won't ride any other way mm-hmm. with him unless he's fully geared up. So yep. Yep. that's that's the the only way we're going out. <laughs> I think the only time I've ever hung out with Miles is when he's like in his gear because it's for <laughs> rides. So he's a little intimidating now that he's six foot two. So <laughs> so we're kind of a funny sight. Um, my son Miles has been riding with me since he was ten, mm-hmm. um, so I can kind of go over some of that yes, as too. Please, I'd love that. Um, so I, when I started riding, I never really had the intention that I would take any passengers. It wasn't mm-hmm. something I figured I'd ever need to do. Um, and my first bike was a Honda Shadow. They're stellar bikes. They're great first bikes. My dad's yeah. a lifelong Harley guy, and that's what he told me to get. So that's what I got. Um, after about two seasons on that, I realized I was ready for more power. I was ready for long distance, more power, that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, after I got the bigger bike, that's when I started taking my son with me on short rides places. And he was 10 at the time. Um, totally lost my train of thought. Um, let's see here. <laughs> that's what happens when you're live, right? So let's see. He was 10 at the time when he started riding with me. The whole reason I gained the confidence to take a passenger Mm. was I had done some more long distance riding and I tend to be a pack rat. I'm the one in the group that has it if you need it. If you need an extension cord, I probably have it. (laughs) If you need a wrench, I've got that too. Nice. Um, So I had been carrying a lot of um, very, very, uh, what would you call it? Almost like a pylon, just, you know, however much gear on my back seat that's just moving with me. Mm-hmm. And then I went to, um, it was called Wild Gypsy Tour. It's now called Ride Wild. 
So I went to an all women's at the Buffalo Chip Sturgis. I went to that twice, two or three times now. I can't remember. Um, One of the women there, Morgan, had injured her ankle and needed someone to ride her back to camp. And I was the closest. I had the biggest bike, you know, the whole whatever. And (laughs) they were like, can you take her? And I just like had this full panic moment of, oh my God, I've never had like a movie live person on the back of my bike. And it was, you know, a mile we needed to go, but it was all gravel. It was all bumps and potholes and hills. And, and so here I've got Morgan on the back and I'm just like carefully making my way down the gravel and all of that and got her back to camp. And I was like, I can do that. That's not so bad. So from there, I started taking my son on little short rides I'd pick him up from school on occasion which that was cool. just like the most awesome thing in middle school to get picked up by your mom on a motorcycle oh my god <laughs> mom um, ever. Amazing. yeah so he'd have his backpack on and I'd put the rest of his stuff in my saddlebags and um so actually I think one of the other pictures you had with us in our white helmet see that yeah. was picking up from school cool. um so yeah from there it was just a matter of kind of trial runs of me feeling comfortable with a passenger and teaching him how to be a good passenger. Mm -hmm. Um, Because most people and anyone who's had an adult passenger probably learns real quick who makes a good passenger and who doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Um, So he's been riding with me now since he was 10 and he'll be 16 this summer. So, you know, Mm -hmm. he goes out with me on longer and longer rides now that he's older, Mm -hmm. but, um, I think that's a big thing too, which is really intimidating to women is taking passengers. It's not something we we often are asked to do or volunteer to do. Mm -hmm. I've taken a couple of my girlfriends as passengers now since then on day trips and that. um, And I, I think it's a riot. So (laughs) yeah. Mm -hmm. That's um, yeah. I was just having this conversation with some friends like just last week about how reluctant we are to take passengers and it's really hard to like break into it if you've never had a passenger and then you know I I will I I love the idea of taking girlfriends for a ride I think that would be Mm -hmm. such a hoot um and but then I think like what like I wouldn't want to hurt them but then I'm like but how do you get good at it if you don't take anyone Mm -hmm. and then so the the person that I think who I could start with would be like my husband I'd just be like just come (laughs) with me as a passenger and then like I'll build the confidence and take other people that I would like, you know, once I have that, that skill or that, that comfort yeah. level. So, so since you've been riding with passengers for so long, what tips do you have for women or new riders or anyone yeah. really who is interested in taking someone as a passenger on their motorcycle? Yeah. I will say there's nothing that scares me more than someone who's a one or two season rider who and people can learn quick. My husband picked it up really quick. I, you wouldn't catch me unless like my leg were broken on the back of his bike. I just, I can't do it. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Especially with him only having a season or two under his belt. Mm -hmm. Um, The biggest tips I, I would say, especially when it comes to children, and these may seem very common sense, of course, is make sure their feet can touch the pegs, the passenger pegs, the pylon pegs. When I started riding with my son, I didn't have a backrest for him. So making sure that at all costs, they hang on to you. There, mm-hmm. you know, there's never a time they should let go, ever. Mm-hmm. Stop sign, stop light. Those are the biggest times that kids want to let go. Just has to be drilled in their head. You cannot let go of me. Yeah. Um, doing, having them sit on the bike when it's stationary having them just learn how to get mount the bike, get on and off, Mm -hmm. um, which sides to get on, teaching them that things are hot, (laughs) you know, like they don't understand that. Uh, And it depends on the age of the kid, but I've seen even adults that don't Mm. ride or don't ride as passengers get on and burn the snot out of their leg because they didn't, you know, realize like this is a running engine right underneath of you. Um, so just teaching them common sense things about you don't get on the bike when I'm not around, you know, mm-hmm. you wait for me to give you the okay to get on. Um, what else is a big one? Oh, the biggest one is probably you are a column. You are a pillar behind me. Mm-hmm. 
do not try and help me steer this bike. That's my job. Your job is to hang on, enjoy the view, and just go where I go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it may feel like you're going to fall off when we're taking that hard left-hand turn or that hard right-hand turn. Uh, just stay with me, you know. And my son's done a great job of, of understanding that and learning that. Mm -hmm. um, the other probably scariest one has been mounting the bike. I never have someone mount the bike when it's on the kickstand. I always ride the bike and then they mount from foot peg on over. Mm -hmm. um, there's too much weight riding on that that uh, kickstand that can possibly cause calamity if somebody is, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> if it's not stable. So, you know, those are probably the biggest tips, but getting confidence with riding with a passenger takes time. It just mm -hmm. does. Um, you know, when we started out, it was around the block a couple of times and into the driveway, learn how to dismount. Mm -hmm. um, and then we started with his school is about 15 miles from where I live. So, I'd pick him up from school and we'd ride home and not take any crazy scenic long route, you know, stay mm -hmm. off the highways though. Um, I would say, especially when you're riding with children, lower weight children and younger children, I would say probably 12, 10 and under um, because they're going to be lighter weight and probably attention span a little shorter. <laughs> um, keep the ride shorter, keep them, you know, uh, or make frequent stops so mm -hmm. that you can check in and, or have a comm system so that you can, you can check in and see how they're doing. Yeah. Um, so, so those are some of the things I would, I would suggest start small, stay off the big highways. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now I'm at a point with my son where he's basically an adult size. So, you know, we can communicate and, mm -hmm. and we've got our system down pat. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's all kind of common sense stuff, but it's it's things you you need to prep and do before you just slap them on the bike and and yep. take off with them. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's um, that's a good point because passengers really do throw off. Like it's a lot of extra weight on a motorcycle, yep. and movement can be like really, really even the slightest movement you feel. Um, and I, full disclosure, I haven't taken passengers, but I've been a, a passenger extensively. I, I was a passenger for a while, my husband's bike, and then a friend of ours, and, and I was not a good passenger. I was one of those people that moved around. Like, I would fall asleep sometimes. Like, it was just, like, <laughs> I take the handlebars. Like, it wasn't good. Um, but that, you know, to, to your point of you need to, like, alter your riding, you know, when you have, um, if you're a mother that rides with children, it isn't just the same ride as, like, when you're going with your friends. Like, you do have to alter it. Um, and make it really um, specific to uh, the child or, or the, the young adult and make sure that they're engaged, you know, they're, they're um, wearing the right things, they're aware of what's going on, they're kind of moving how you want them to move. So I think that's, um, that's a good point too because I think a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to hit the, the highway and like go to Sturgis. But it's like that's not in reality, <laughs> that's not what you get. No. It's, it's very different. Yeah. And then, yeah, so and I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I was going to say, so now that you, you know, you've been riding with, with miles a ton and, and your kids, do you think that it has encouraged them to ride or like, how is you riding changed their perspective, if at all about motorcycles? Yeah, for sure. Um, he said he was maybe going to pop in, but uh, I, I suspected he'll probably chicken out. But uh, <laughs> it's absolutely – my son, Miles, he, he definitely has found encouragement to, to ride. Um, as he said this morning, yeah, I'm sick of riding on the back of your bike. But I will say as a mom, to have your 15-year-old sitting on the back of your bike that close to you experiencing mm. the same kind of passion that you have for it uh. – there, nothing beats that, you know, as a mom, it's so hard, I think, sometimes to find those genuine connections with your kids. Mm -hmm. And um, for him, he absolutely wants to get licensed as soon as he can. I've set some ground rules about that, of course, because, you know, we're still forming the brain. So, <laughs> and uh, we don't need to do anything irresponsible. But, um, you know, he's got to maintain good grades. He's got to be doing well in school, staying out of trouble, those sorts of things. But ultimately, when he does get licensed, if he is a teenager, um, 
it's got to be a bike I'm comfortable with. You know, we're not going for any crotch rockets, any high powered ninjas, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing against any of those. Those are awesome. I just want my kid to take it a little slower out the gate. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's, he has to ride with me. He can't ride mm -hmm. with anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be the criteria for the first couple seasons if he does mm -hmm. get licensed. But um, it actually, you and, and my son kind of coming of age here has sparked for me um, an interest in be, wanting to become MSF certified so that I can be the one to teach him yeah. and pass him, <laughs> you know, to get his license. Like, yep, you made it. it. Or no, you didn't, <laughs> you know, so um, it's going to be a lot harder with your mom teaching the class. Oh so, <laughs> yeah. So for everyone who is watching or listening to this, um, in case you don't know, so I this past summer became a certified motorcycle coach. Um, so awesome. Year. And then Serena is going to be one next year. So I applied. So we'll wait to hear back. <laughs> oh, no, totally. You're going to be amazing. And um, but that oh, gosh, that's like another good point that you bring up, too. So like, Yes, like you, you're a really experienced rider and you obviously have like a really big focus on safety and the fact that you wear all the gear all the time and um, the passion that you show for riding and being a, a long distance rider with Moon Motorsports, like this is like a huge passion of yours. So I hadn't thought about this, but like the fact that you already ride and for other women who ride or who um, want to ride and they have children, the fact that you have already done it, like you're a lot you're like educated on the subject, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, can, you can make kind of steer him into like decisions on like a bike that's going to be appropriate and like how to ride in certain situations. Right. Um, so I think that might be like for a lot of women with children who want to ride motorcycles that maybe don't think about that. The fact that like, rather than just thinking about, Oh, it's going to influence your kids to do like negative risky behavior. It's like, well, but how can you steer them in a way that's like really productive and safe at the same time? Instead, maybe you can have a positive influence in them learning to ride responsibly mm -hmm. and be protected. And again, nothing is ever a given. Things happen. Accidents happen. Yeah. Um, but I feel better knowing that with my experience that I can be there alongside him and you know, yeah. teach him the right way and, and uh, be there to watch his tail as mm -hmm. he's uh, learning how to ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it is being a passenger with someone is such a bonding experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I've ridden with my husband, but like to ride with, I like, think like a mother or a father or like a, a sister mm -hmm. or brother would be like really incredible bonding. Um, and like you said, you know, parents don't always have that unique experience with their children. So to be able to like have like that really close connection and that shared hobby, I think is like super special as well. Yeah. It's, it's even my daughter is in a way a lot like me in that I've been, I've been a passenger on a bike, I think maybe three times mm -hmm. <laughs> in my life. I absolutely hate it. I hate not being in control. I, yeah. I I'm not a wiggler, but <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't relax. I can't, I can't get into it. And for my daughter, she has ridden down the block with me, I think once. And she was like, nope, not doing that again. I said, okay. Uh -huh. um, but just at, at Christmas or Thanksgiving, she said, maybe I should learn to ride. And I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> but she has seen the passion that I have for it and the adventures I've had. And as an adult and as a woman, I think it's very hard to make friends and make connections and mm. motorcycling for me has brought more closeness and more friends, genuine friendships, not just coworkers or, you know, the people you, you kind of talk to every once in a while, uh, yeah. but real genuine friendships and relationships that I never would have found any other way. And yeah. I know for some of my teenage kids that are uh, older teenagers with, social media and everything that's out there they're really struggling to find close relationships close friends especially mm -hmm. now that they're out of high school so um motorcycling interestingly enough is one of those rare hobbies that yeah. that uh can bring you a lot of, of closeness so it's 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 a double-edged sword when you've got little kids I, mm -hmm. I i know that so um 
and I'm kind of talking in circles here at this point, but uh. <laughs> it's making sense to me. So um, I, I totally agree with you, like with um, finding other women who ride, it's like immediate best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like you have so much in common and like if you ride, you know the feeling, you can talk about your bikes, you can talk about, I mean, days and days on end. Um, but yeah, it is, it is like a huge connection point, especially for adults who, you know, it can be hard to find. And actually, like, to, like, actually, this is bringing up something. So when I moved to Minnesota it was shortly, shortly after I started riding and I, I hadn't met a lot of people, like had a couple people. Um, yeah. But when I plugged into the Leaders Twin Cities chapter was when I really started to expand my network of mm -hmm. other female friends. And um, it, it can just be such a great community. And I think, it, yeah, it definitely led me to you and all the other incredible women that I know in the Twin Cities now through the Leaders and through the Iron Lilies. Yeah. And I, I wish more women knew about that because it's like such a unique sisterhood. Um, yeah. but of course, like, you know, we're all sisters. We all have very shared, similar experiences in life. But when you ride, it's, it's something unique. Um, mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. like really nurturing and fulfilling and um yeah I just I'm, I'm really passionate about like getting the word out about that I know you are <laughs> and, and, and I am too not to not to your level but I will admit my first probably two seasons writing um I really didn't know what I was getting myself into mm -hmm. I didn't really have any expectation of writing in groups or writing solo or I had no idea, literally no idea. I passed the, the basic writers course. I had two great female instructors. One of them was all of, you know, five foot and probably 80 pounds dripping wet on her, on her fully dressed road king. Nice. And, uh, and she said, if you don't go buy a bike immediately after this class, the odds of you actually taking up riding will be almost none. Mm -hmm. And so I, and, and, you know, I give my husband a lot of credit because I tend not to ask for permission. I tend to do and just expect forgiveness. So, so I came home from the class and said, I looked online one night and said, I'm going to buy a bike. And I had no expectations. And so for my first two seasons, I rode with my one girlfriend from work who encouraged me to ride. And, you know, our schedules often ended up conflicting. And one season, I think I got a thousand miles in because I just, I didn't want to go by myself. Yeah. And, and then I started to dive into finding some groups and, and I think that's really the message that needs to get out there for women writers, yeah. because I, I know you do, but I firmly believe that women are going to be the absolute future of the motorcycle industry with mm -hmm. the shifting paradigm and the, the easy riders retiring from yeah. leadership and, and yeah. that sort of thing. So um, the women's groups are out there and sometimes just like finding a good doctor, it takes a few tries to find a group that you gel with, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it, it isn't always an immediate connection and there's ride styles that differ and opinions that are different, but there's tons of women out there that are, are mothers in these groups too, yeah. that may not ride with their children, but have similar viewpoints on how they feel about riding yeah. and having children and protecting them and, and that sort of thing too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And um, since we're sort of on the subject of like writing and, and writing with others, is there, when you think of um, writing with your kids on the back, is there like one ride that really sticks out in your mind that was like really <laughs> memorable for any particular reason? I knew you were going to ask that question, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's hard to say. I Honestly, probably my favorite rides have been picking, they're not even rides, just picking my son up from school mm. and being like rolling up on my bike in the pickup line mm. and <laughs> having all his gear strapped to the bike and, ha you know, pulling off in a parking spot and having him gear up and just mm. the beaming expression on his face of like, you know, we've all been there when a parent has dropped us off at school and been like mortified, drop us off like five blocks away, you know, and here my son comes running out, you know, just, you can't, I can't replicate that. I can't replace that. But I think as he's gotten older, it's gotten more precious to me because I know the days are limited mm -hmm. that I will be able to convince him to get on the back of mom's bike and go for a full day ride with me or go on an adventure. Yeah. Um, you know, so I was, I was home one day this summer and he was, he was home 
from school and I was like, let's just go right to the pickle factory in, mm. in Pepin, Wisconsin. So we spent all day, just him and I riding along, you know, 35 in Wisconsin. And it was awesome. It was just, mm -hmm. it was great, you know, and we've got our headsets so we can communicate, but um, there's no one particular, I think it's just a more culmination of <laughs> coolness. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Miles, I'm just like picturing him like coming out of class and like you're yeah. just like rocked up. Everyone else is in like a minivan. Uh-huh. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's so epic. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Can't replicate it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super special. And it's great. It's great bonding with your kids. I've got a, a, another girlfriend that was sharing some stories with me today about she's got a bunch of kids and mm -hmm. she would kind of pick kids to go with her and spend yeah. a day with her a weekend with her riding. And um, I don't want to tell her story. That's her story to tell. But, um, you know, she said it was really, really as a mom, a really great bonding experience. And now she's got grandkids that she yeah. can do that with. And in turn, because she took her kids riding, her kids trust her with her mm. grandkids to go riding, you oh. know, so it's, it's this cyclical mm. bonding experience as a family. So I think that's super cool. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That is so yeah. awesome. And then, <laughs> so since Miles is like your main passenger, yeah. um, what is his, like, what, what, um, like, what is his experience riding with you? I'm sure you talk about it at length or, you know, cause I imagine, you know, having a mother who is like, unafraid to sort of step into that authenticity mm -hmm. and like be who she wants I mean I don't want to speak for you but like yeah you know <laughs> it, it can be different when you step into something that you never thought you you would be part of um especially since you started riding a little bit later mm -hmm. um and then you feel like you're in control you can operate this incredible machine so yeah. you know what is what is it like for him to have an empowered mother who is like picking him up from school, you know, when like <laughs> no one else is getting on the back of a motorcycle. I think he said it best because he came with on the, the orchard, the pumpkin patch ride with yeah, the leader. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when we got home from that ride, I didn't really expect him to say much. You know, he was standing across the street at the coffee shop, taking a picture of the group. And, yeah. you know, here he's the only guy on the ride. And of course I yeah. checked to make sure it was okay. I brought, you know, a boy with on, on the girls ride. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and he, he said to me when we got home, they all seem really cool. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, they're all like, they all ride motorcycles and, you know, in his 15 year old teenage way. And, and he's, he's like, it, it meant, I could tell it meant so much to me mm. for him to see not just me, but an entire group mm. of diverse women, all different ages, yeah all different orientations, you know, you name it, mm. ethnicities, whatever, and all different types of bikes and riding experience levels and whatever, all together, powerful and, and strong yeah. and in control and in charge of what they're doing and just having a good time doing it. Mm. I mean, I, I could see to him there were like bells and whistles going off and, yeah. and it's, you know, it's kind of that mother's hope that someday whoever his partner ends up being if he chooses to have one that these are some things that creep into his brain that mm. like that he hopefully subliminally looks for <laughs> you know mm -hmm. strength and independence and and honesty and 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 you know just fortitude and, and you know go for it and mm. all that sort of stuff so it, it, that last ride was really really cool to share with him and mm -hmm. and he hadn't really been on a big group ride like that before. Mm -hmm. So that was a new experience for him. And it was really hard on me. It was physically very demanding um, mm -hmm. having a, a passenger for that ride, but um, it was really cool to, for, to hear his experience from that, mm -hmm. which I, I, I guess I wasn't expecting. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I remember that day so clearly and mm -hmm. Miles just fits in like, you know, he's just hanging out. Like he's there for the ride and yeah, you kind of just, he's like part of the group, you know, right. um, fits right in. And I, I love that you're exposing him to um, a whole new world of, of motorcycling and also um, empowered women. So he gets to like see you firsthand but also be exposed to other women in your community 
that are sort of living authentically, riding motorcycles, being in control of their lives, in control of their journey. And um, I'm just such a big fan of yours, girlfriend. I love you so much. I just want this to be the normal for him. I want him yeah. to be, to expect that this is the way women are and should be. Yeah. And when they're not, ask why. Yeah. You know, what can I do to bring you up, make it better, you yeah. know, give you power. So, yeah. And I want him to feel empowered too. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a good yeah. deal all the way around. That's beautiful, Serena. Oh, I love that so much. Okay, so this has been so fun. Let's do this every Sunday. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Works um, for me. Yeah, no, this, I yeah. want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for just being an incredible human. Um, oh, incredible you too. <laughs> in our community and an incredible mother and just all around badass. Um, huh. so, I I'll echo it back at you. I'm flattered and honored that you asked me to do this. So, oh, of course, yeah. of course. Yeah, so um, let everyone know, the community know, how can yeah. we find you? So at the start, we talked about how um, you co-founded the Iron Lilies Minnesota, mm -hmm. which is badass. They're a great group <laughs> of humans riding together. Yeah. And then um, also quick plug for your amazing jewelry line. So like your earrings, I have a pair. Where can we find more out more yeah. about so a lot of this stuff is in its infancy. Um, myself and uh, Jeannie Williams founded uh, the Iron Lilies Minnesota uh, end of last year. So really just with the intention for, you know, another inclusive women's based group. Anyone who identifies as a woman is absolutely welcome. It's a completely inclusive group. Um, you know, I, I have a certain style of writing that I prefer to do. And I was, I really started it as a platform to be able to plan longer distance rides, um, focus more on safety and education and that sort of thing. So that's, that's really the goal for at least our, our branch of the Iron. Was a follow Iron Man. And if you are a Minnesota based woman, you can join our Facebook group also to get more detailed information on rides and that also. Mm -hmm. um, now you're, you're giving a lot of kudos to the earrings. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Are, are these guys right here. Oh, so I don't know. So, um, so I, 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 I don't, it's something I had thought about doing for a long time, but as with many things, whether it's motorcycle riding or creating jewelry, mm -hmm. we tend to stall ourselves out and second guess things. Oh yeah. And um, to be quite honest, I work for a living to make money and do the fun things I want to do, not the other way around. Maybe someday it'll be the other way around. Um, so I started making these rubber inner tube earrings because I like to be fairly, I don't want to say girly. I mean, I get dirty and sweaty and grimy and all of that on the bikes too. But if you ride with me, you'll know. I always have makeup on. I yeah. always have my hair done, even under my helmet. And I always have earrings on. And... Ride. Seriously, <laughs> yeah, with, so... your, with your glasses, it's so cute. <laughs> um, so I made these because it's so hard to find earrings that I can wear comfortably under a helmet. Yeah, and sure. these rubber inner tube earrings, they, they sit comfortably under a helmet. They're waterproof. Mm. Um, you know, so I've had leather earrings that I've had on in the rain and they just wick up water into your ears. <laughs> so um, right now these you can get through. Um, uh, Jeannie has a site called Black Ink Moto mm. Company. Um, you can find that on Instagram as well. And she's got a whole bunch of earrings that I made and she's selling those right now as well. Otherwise, you can also send me a, a, a message if you're interested in, I can make all sorts of different things. Yeah. So that's a little bit on that. Um, I hope to make a whole bunch of them and, you know, have a booth or some things at some of the moto shows and things uh, yeah. coming up at like Bauhaus Brewery and that over the mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Um and then I wish I had done this when I started riding just to more document my journey on motorcycles. I know there's a ton of YouTube channels out there and all those sorts of things, yours included. Um, but I just started Redhead to Revhead. So number two, Revhead as in Rev. Um, so you can follow me here on Instagram at, at uh, redhead to revhead And that's the same name for my YouTube channel, which has one little measly video on it right now. We're going to get that up and rolling now that my GoPro has finally arrived. Nice. And um, yeah, so, so 
Well, that's, that's kind of the deal. I hope to just, you know, document some of my journeys, some of the follies, some of the hard stuff that you, you, happens on the road. And um, I, I have a knack for attracting thunderstorms. So <laughs> I've, I've, if you want to know about riding in the rain, I, I can give you a lot of experience tips on that too. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my other bite's name is Stormy for a reason. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, well, you know, you've probably got like a million more long distance rides coming up. Um, so yeah. gonna gonna be putting out some great content, no doubt. So, I hope so. I'll be I hope following so. along for sure. And hopefully um, we can have some adventures together. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so for everyone, follow Serena Redhead Redhead to Revhead, amazing, amazing human. And again, want to thank you so much for joining us tonight and being the person that you are and yeah, just um, keep riding, keep those miles coming, and stay safe out there. Sounds good. <laughs> Dirty side down. All right. <laughs> we'll see you. <ya. laughs> see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.